Pre-Calc students, this is Mrs. Fallon again. We are on the second part of lesson one for unit four. So what I'm looking at here is just all of, kind of like what I'm gonna have you kind of do on your own eventually. Um, so I wanted to kind of go through like the whole, um, like how to find all of these pieces, kind of give you a shortcut way, and then work through a couple examples of how to do that. All right, so first, what I want us to know is let's talk about like how to find some of these things. So if I look at this first example, x-intercepts. An x-intercept for a rational function, an x-intercept is when y is zero. Well, when you plug zero in for y here, what will end up happening is if you multiply both sides by whatever this denominator is, I would multiply both sides by like five minus x and I would multiply this side by five minus x. Well, because this is zero, it, this just turns into zero because zero times anything is zero. What ends up happening is your x-intercepts, and if you remember this from Algebra 2, is all you're really going to do is uh, set your numerator equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to say set numerator equal to zero. That's how you find your x-intercepts. So for this one, I'm going to do 2x minus 6 equals zero. And I'm going to get 2x equals 6, x equals 3. So remember, an x-intercept is when uh, y is zero, but the easiest way to do this for rational functions is just to look at the numerator because the denominator won't have any effect. Um, all right, the y-intercept. You're going to plug zero in for x and solve. So my y-intercept plug zero in for x. So we can think of f of x as like y, right? So if I plug zero in for x, I get two times zero minus six over five minus zero. So I get, this is zero minus six, and then five minus zero is five. I get a y-intercept of negative six fifths. So because we're gonna write it as a point, we're gonna write it like that. All right, next one, vertical asymptotes. This is what we talked about in the last one. Um, so a vertical asymptote is when the denominator is set equal to zero. So denominator equals zero. So all you're gonna do here is take a look at your denominator, which in this case is five minus x, set it equal to zero. I'm gonna add x to both sides, and so I get x equals five. Please remember to write your vertical asymptote as a line. It's not a point, it's not a number, it's a line. All right, so that's kind of the game plan for those two things, or, or actually those three things. The rest, how to find the whole of your function. Um, you only have a whole if there's a common factor. So I'm gonna put only if common factor uh, in numerator and denominator. So what you're gonna do is you wanna factor this to be able to figure out if there's a hole in this graph. So I'm gonna take my function and I'm gonna write it in factored form. So I'm just gonna take f of x, I'm gonna factor the top and factor the bottom. So on the numerator, I'm just gonna factor out a two. It's about the only thing I can factor. And on the denominator, I really have nothing to factor. So the only time we have a whole is if there's a common factor on the top and bottom. But notice, I don't have a common factor in the top and bottom. Like I don't have a two, or a, I'm sorry, factors are only with variables. So I don't have an x minus three and I don't have a five minus x. So you would just say there are none. All right, domain is always gonna be, so it's always all real numbers except for your vertical asymptote and if there's a hole. So again, what I want you to remember to do is I'm gonna write this in set notation. So this is all real numbers. You do need to know that notation. X doesn't equal, and then you look up here. What's your vertical asymptote? Five. And since we didn't have any hole, we don't have to worry about that. So then my domain would be all real numbers except for five. So this is the game plan of how you find all of this information. So I'm gonna go through the next two examples. If you want to try them on your own uh, and then just pause the video and then try them and then unpause and check your answers, that's great. If you wanna just kind of work with me, continue on and we'll walk through the next couple examples. All right, number two, well, g of x, I should say. So in this one, again, I'm gonna find my x-intercepts. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and I'm gonna set my numerator equal to zero. Well, my numerator is just x. So x equals zero, I just get zero. <laughs> So my x-intercept is zero, zero. My y-intercept, if you remember what we did above, we plugged zero in for x. 
So if I say y equals plug 0 in for x, well, 0 divided by anything will end up still giving me 0, right? So my y-intercept is the point 0, 0. Okay, vertical asymptote. You set your denominator equal to 0. So this is where all of your mad skills with polynomials is going to come into play. So we take this denominator, set it equal to 0. What kind of function is that? You might recognize that's a quadratic. How do we solve a quadratic? We either factor or we can use quadratic formula. This one is factorable, so I'm going to go ahead and factor. Because factoring is generally going to be our easiest path. So put x and x, numbers that multiply to 6 but add to negative 5. <clears throat> so I got negative... I got negative 3 and negative 2, because negative 3 and negative 2 multiply to positive 6, but add to negative 5. So if I solve both of those, I get two vertical asymptotes, one at 3 and one at 2. All right, the hole in my graph. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor my polynomial. So I'm going to rewrite this in factored form. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to rewrite it in factored form. Well, obviously the numerator can't be factored, and we already factored the denominator over here, right? So do you see any common factors from top to bottom? I don't. I have an x, I have an x minus 3, and an x minus 2. So there are no, there are no holes in this. And then last, we're going to say our domain. Your domain is all real numbers, with the exception of any vertical asymptotes or holes. So x doesn't equal, and you can just put 2, comma, Three. Like, in other words, just list the two vertical asymptotes. All right, that's all you're doing. Let's try the next one. Again, if you want to pause the video, try this one on your own and then unpause and check your work. That would be great. Um, on the last one, x-intercept, set the numerator equal to zero. I get x to equal two. Y-intercept, plug zero in for x. So zero minus two. 0 squared times 5 minus, or five times 0 plus 6. I get negative 2 over 0 minus 0 plus 6. I get negative 1 third. I just reduced that. All right, vertical asymptote. I'm going to set my denominator equal to 0. So x squared minus 5x plus 6. Notice this is quadratic. So I'm going to try and factor this one. Actually, this looks like the same one that we factored above, right? So this is just x minus 3, x minus 2. So x equals 3, x equals 2. Okay, whole graph. We're going to write this in factored form. So the numerator is x minus 2, the denominator is x minus 3, and x minus 2. Okay, so this where this stuff, this is why there's a hole in this graph. Notice that I have a common factor on the numerator and the denominator. So notice that I have an x minus 2 and an x minus 2. How else you can tell is, look at your information. This is saying I have an x-intercept at, at positive 2, but I also have an asymptote at positive 2. This shouldn't make sense to you. I can't have a point and a, a discontinuity, like some place that the function doesn't exist. I can't have a point in the, uh, like a gap in my graph at the same exact point. So what you will notice is that the x-intercept and the vertical asymptote, when that happens, when they're the same value, that's because there's a hole in our graph. So even though we kind of originally found that there was an x-intercept and then this, these two vertical asymptotes, we have to cross these two off because those are the ones that kind of result in the hole in my graph. So there's a, instead of there being an x-intercept and a vertical asymptote at 2, there's actually a hole at 2. <clears throat> so what I'm doing here, let's reduce this. If I reduce those two factors, I get 1 over x minus 3. This is now your new function. This is the function you're graphing. This is the function that we're finding. So when I want to find this y value of this hole, I'm going to plug 2 in here. So I get 1 over 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So you need to finish this and find the y value of your whole. Just remember to plug it back into your reduced equation. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, last, uh, domain. So all real numbers with the exception of any vertical asymptote, which we still have that 3. 
and then any whole. So because there's a whole when x is 2. We don't count the negative 1 because we're talking about domain, and domain is only dealing with x's. So I'm just going to say all real numbers except for my vertical asymptote and the x value of that whole. All right, let's take a look at the very last question. It's kind of squeezed down in here at the bottom. I'll try to move this so you can see it. All right, we're asking you to figure out the limits without looking at a graph. That's what this is doing. So this is asking you for the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. So this is left. This is the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. So here's your function. So what you want to do is you want to do this kind of algebraically. So you want to plug in numbers that, come, that are left of negative 4. Or I'm sorry, left of 4. So numbers that are kind of just not quite 4, but almost 4. So what I'm looking for is like plug in a number that's almost 4, like 3.999. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm just going to plug in a number that's close to 4, but on the left side. So 3.999. I'm going to see what kind of answer I get. Uh, all right, so I'm going to do 1 divided by, and then 4 minus 3.999. I get 1,000. So here's what this tells me, that the closer I get to 4, this number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So rather than doing the whole table, I'm just going to plug in one number. And if I get a big number or a positive number, I know that this is going towards positive infinity. Look at the right side. So same kind of deal. But this time I want to look, approach 4 from the right. So give me a number that's close to 4, but just to the right of it. So like, I don't know, 1 over, so we're just going to plug it in for x. So like 1 over 4.001. Right? That's just over it. Let's see what kind of number I get here. So 1 divided by 4 minus 0.4 or 4.001. Notice I get negative 1,000. So that number is really small, which means that my limit is approaching negative infinity. So that's how you do, um, that's how you do limits without having to actually graph the function. All right, what I'd like you guys to work on now um, is there are a couple things left in this thing. I'd like you to work on the in-class practice, so that's the next page. I'd like you to work on, there's two sides, so I'd like you to get both of those completed, um, and then we'll talk about it next class. All right, bye for now.